welcome to another episode of Not A Boring Real Estate Podcast, where we educate the masses in a not-so-boring way, just how you like it. Here's your host, Ryan Domus and Diego Vasquez. Yeah, man. Dude, I'm super happy to have you yeah. here today. Yeah, dude. Excited. Excited. We, this will be fun. So today we got Joe Soto here, uh, host of the Journey with Joe yep. podcast. Journey with Joe. Check it out. Great we podcast. already changed the name. Yeah. Huh? We can change it. I'm, I'm going to rebrand anyway. So yeah, yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah, I think we all have to. You know, we yeah. were like doing this on our own and, and it's finally starting to like bear fruit. Um, it, the podcast has been awesome, but then we went and take like took like a three month hiatus. So thank you for everybody that's been so patient with us. I mean, yes, yeah, it, it really has been three months. You had a baby. Yep. I spent a month in New York just having the time of my and life. This dude thought he was Damn. like Sex in the City. What's that? What's I that really name? was. He's just yeah. drinking, you know, martinis and friggin', you just know, living it up in, yeah. in the city. Yeah, I was living in the city basically for a month, visiting my brother in New Jersey, uh-huh. but I didn't want to stay in his. Boring town of Jersey. Oh. I wanted to stay Jersey. in the city. So you stayed in the city. Yeah, I'm, I'm a single guy. I gotta have fun at summertime in the city. Oh yeah. I mean, so I was out there, and I, you know, I would go on a date, and I'd be like, yeah, you know, I'm looking for apartments out here. You know, I might want to buy oh, coastal see. lifestyle. Dates, escorts. I mean, and who's I, counting? And then I start telling these girls this, and I'm like, wait a minute, I do kind of want to live by coastal. Let me look at apartments, and I, and then one week the humidity hit, and I'm like, oh. yeah, I think I'm. I was like, yeah, I think I'm good. I think that I don't think enough. I want to live out here. Yeah, New York. That humidity is no joke. It is. It's stupid. It's insane, dude. Yeah. It's insane. It's a fun, fun city, but the quality Especially of life for a single guy. Oh, I know, you, dude. You can live it up. Yeah, it exa- doesn't end. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, life's easy here in Laguna, where I can just park my car in my garage. In New York, it's a whole different story. You no, you're like, what was life. I thinking? Yeah. Like, you, mm-hmm. you know, you, it's like he probably started to believe his own story. He's like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, like, I totally want to live here. Like, you should, like, have sex with me. And, <laughs> and then, you know, and then he's like, you no, know, starts looking at properties with her. Like, you know, and then like, you're like, uh oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't want to live here. Hell no. You, you, you took don't. some notes from your uh, your venture capitalist. Yes, That's what I happened, did. right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Really? yeah, he has a, a story that he told when Zulma was on, uh-huh. and he was talking about a venture capitalist that went with like some chick he probably just started dating. Yeah. So, like, what, how, how. It was a $27 million listing on the water in Laguna Beach and the buyer pretended to be like a rich venture capitalist and I realized it's a first date and uh, after drinks he took her to go look at houses like uh, help me go pick out my house and then like I asked him for proof of funds and he's like oh I gotta call my stockbroker for that and I was like yeah you don't never heard from you him don't again. really have it he's no, gone. you don't really have it it yeah. was a Zillow yeah. lead yeah oh shocking yeah <laughs> Yeah. It was a beat Dude, up. That's yeah. crazy. Oh, sure. So then now he's doing that shit. Yeah, now I'm like, wait a minute. You're looking I, at penthouses in Manhattan, right? I, yeah. I'm like, wait, I can afford this. Never. That's <laughs> an easy way to get a date. Oh, yeah. You don't even have to be on Tinder to do that. Oh, no, man. <laughs> like, find an agent. Yes. Yes. Does, doesn't stop him. No, yeah. it doesn't. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah, oh, yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. So that's welcome. So welcome to Not a Boring Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, Diego Vasquez. And I'm Ryan Domus. And today we have Joe Soto uh, with us uh, again. And Joseph is a good friend of mine. Uh, I met him through NARep, yep. which uh, is an amazing networking platform that I've used myself to just meet new, meet other agents, meet listing agents. I've been able to get deals because of NARep. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's already bar- like bared fruit for me there too. Yeah. Um, so we have a really cool show for you today, guys. Uh, you know, there's a lot of feeling of negativity, impending doom. The rates are high. Dun, 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 dun. No um, inventory. We need some positivity, yeah. you guys, and that's why we brought Joe Soto on today. Thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah, uh, I appreciate yeah. it. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. I mean, dude, it's, it's everywhere you look. There's negativity. Negativity sells. Sex and negativity sells, and you just can't get wrapped up in it, right? Like you have no control over that shit. That no. stuff's gonna take you down a black hole and just ruin your day, week, month, year, and you just have to focus on what you can control. Like that's been my big thing for the last year, year and a half, is just blinders on like i looked up and rates were seven percent i had no idea like i know it might sound like bullshit no but i literally was just like hunt Mm -hmm. hunt make calls see people that's it like and then i looked up i was like oh wow like seven companies closed Mm -hmm. like there was a new implodometer that's right right i was like oh shit yes and my team's like yeah dude like it's rough out here. I'm like, oh, I'm just pitching people 10%. Uh, I had no like, idea. Stated income loan. I'm like 10% bank statement loan. Mm-hmm. That's how I knew there was a problem, by the way. That that day when I was like, so this uh, bank statement loan is going to be 10.25. I was like, shit, are rates that high? 
Your team was like, yeah, bro, they've been yeah. going up every day. I'm like, I know yeah. Barry Habib's been telling me that, but whatever. So, I don't know. People are still buying. People are still buying. They're lining up to buy. Fucking right? mm-hmm. They're lining up to buy, which, again, it's, it is what it is, right? You just, you have no control over that. And people are buying at seven. What are they going to do at five or four or three? It's going to be stupid. Yes. You, know, yeah. you sell your firstborn again. No, really. Stupid. And, and with no inventory, there's always going to be competition right now. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just like completely insane in that it's regard. Insane. Yeah. In most of the United States, too, by the way, it's not just Orange County. It's everywhere is, is crazy. I think there's a few little pockets that aren't that nuts, but almost, you know, across the country, it's it's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I figured. Yeah, so, like, if I was sitting at a bar and I was like, hey, man, like, how, what do I need to do to get my finances in order? In order to qualify, because I I personally feel like our generation is fucked. Like yeah. they they don't have their finances in order. They don't know how much they need to save for a house. Like if some like if you were just sitting at the bar and I ask you that question, what do I got to do to get my finances in order to buy a house? Like, what would you say? Excuse me, sir. I think I'm <laughs> fucked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I do make money. I make a hundred k a year, but I'm I'm still broke. Yeah. yeah. Right. I used to th- I dude I used to think. A hundred thousand dollars was like a lot. Like, holy shit! Like yeah. I'm, I fucking made it. Yeah, I'm still fucking broke. Yeah. I, you know, and so, so yeah, so I'm sitting at the bar. Yeah, so if yep. I was sitting at the bar and I'm asking you, how can I afford a house? What would you say? So the first thing we have to do is look at your personal budget. So okay. go ahead, pull it up, Ryan. It's like, psh, 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 psh. no, you're gonna tell me you don't have shit because yeah. that's what ninety percent of the people do. They oh, don't have shit. Nothing. So the first thing mm-hmm. is you need to track your money. You need to make more, spend less. Okay. Right. If you're not tracking it, you're fucked. But we're so in California. It, it doesn't matter. But if you look at the people who are buying, they track their numbers. They know I spend X, I make Y, I have Z left over. And Z is going into my savings every month to go into my house fund. Right? So, like, that's the first thing. Do you have a budget? No. No. You don't? Okay. I don't so know, that's the I don't know first what thing. I can afford. Yeah. First thing, right? Yeah. Do you know how much you're spending on that Starbucks every month? Oh, no, no clue. It's all right? on my phone. I just scan it. You know, yeah. You have no clue. Mm-hmm. It's it's food. Food is the number one spender of money. Food and alcohol. If okay. you go out and do that, right? Okay. So like that's. I spend so much on food. Food yeah. is yeah. Like I've I've had people. I've told them you need to cancel DoorDash. Mm-hmm. Oh really? Yeah, dude. You're spending four hundred dollars a month on DoorDash. Oh, that's light. That's five thousand dollars a year, right? That's probably light. Yeah, oh but that, that's, that's right. the thing. So first thing, like if we're sitting down, be like, so how's your budget look every month? Oh, How, how's your surplus? But you would just get a blank stare. Yeah. 90% of people, it's a blank stare. And, and I feel like I used to be a lot better at it when I had a nine to five because I knew like I was essentially fixed income, right? Yeah. Like I, I knew what I was making every, every week or every two weeks. And, and then I knew what, like wh- how much I had to buy groceries with, how much I have this, this, and this, maybe had like 200 bucks of play money. And that was it. Yeah. Now that we're in real estate, I think especially just because I mean anybody that has any torp- sort of sales job where it's it's not guaranteed, you're you know you're you're you know you're uh, what do you call it? You're you know new money for you know for a month, and then you're destitute eating you know top ramen for the next three months yep. until you get your next you know sale, mm-hmm. yeah. and it's just continuing, and it's you know you're five years later, and you're like. I still don't have money saved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm obsessed with it, and I'll tell you why. And there was one defining moment that defined why I'm obsessed with my budget. So I was in loans. Market went kaboom. Took from Peter to pay Paul. My wife worked seven days a week. I had I couldn't keep a job. I worked for three banks that got shut down by the FDIC in one year. Oh, shit. And one day, I sit down, and I just start adding up our bills. My wife handled all of the finances, and I'm just adding it up. Discover. Visa. Amex, Amex, Visa. And I was like, holy shit, it's $80,000. Whoa. And I said, honey. What the fuck? Yeah. Do you know we owe $80,000? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. She, and in her head, she was probably saying, your lazy ass hasn't worked. You haven't made any money. Ah! You haven't made any oh, money no. in eight months. And I'm like, dude, market's kaboom. Yeah. Do you not see the employee meter? <laughs> yeah. Right? And that was like my moment. That was the last day she ever handled the finances. Oh, shit. Fair enough. The, the uh, last day. And it wasn't her fault. It was your fault it was for not my, working. A, a thousand you, percent. You, it was my bum. fault. Right? It was, it was a th- she was working seven days a week with a newborn at home. Oh, she was wow. serving. She was serving tables. Um, at a restaurant, she'd work till one, two in the morning, and then you know, kids ready to go. Wow, or five in the morning, right? They don't want dad. What right? a story! Yeah. So, so from there, I just when I got a coach and I finally became obsessed with budgeting, I've been budgeting like to the penny for the last like seven, eight years. 
Wow. Like, and when I talk to the penny, like my wife will write a, a check for like Girl Scout cookies. And I'm like, hey, where was this $20 you wrote? And she's like, it was Girl Scout cookies. And I was like, well, why'd you write a check? Like I obsess over it. So wow. I, I track it like OCD because I know there's going to be some months where it's really, really good. Yeah. And some months where it's like, shoot, do I have to pull from savings? Like we're like my bills, I my survival number is the same. Yeah, the dude. amount of money I need to make, I got kids in private school. I got a daughter going to university. I've got all of the be- debt, right? Yeah. Not including all of the expenses at the office for running a team, paying all their salaries, all of that stuff. So I obsess about it and I really, like I pound on people that you got to know what's coming in and reality of what's going out. And if that number doesn't add up, Right, like then you have to fix it. Holy right? shit! Yeah, it's, it's like a calorie deficit, but for a budget, it's like dude, yeah. it's 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 yeah. it's really one hundred and one. But so many people are scared to look at it. Mm-hmm. Right, <laughs> they are. Yeah, yes. it, it's just it's scary because mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I'm not really running negative, and it's like, no fool, you are. Mm-hmm. Like, it, yes. and you could only do that for a certain amount of time before you wind up in bankruptcy court. Yeah, like, I know what it's like. Just it. Go into the ATM and not. Do you want a receipt? No. <laughs> I don't even want to know. I don't want to see it. Yeah, yeah. So I know what that's. I know exactly what you're talking about because I was totally all about that. Totally. Where I was like, if I don't look at that number, it'll just be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. But that's not reality. So I think the first thing, if you're looking to make the change, you have to know the data. You have to know the numbers. If you're really serious about it, in in, in, any, in any aspect of life, but really, like, if you're really going to buy a house and invest, know what's coming in, know what's going out, and then make the changes. Right. You look at some of these people. And they sacrifice so much. They live with family. They drive shitty cars. They, like, got the same shirt for forever. And then you look at their bank account, and you're like, wow, $300,000. Like, I know. You <laughs> almost like you almost want to look down on them, and they got way more money in the bank than yeah, you do. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, uh, but they realized they, they knew their priorities. Yeah. They knew their numbers. They're like, dude, I don't need. But, Joe, we're in real estate. We have to drive, a, a, you know, a fifty, sixty thousand dollars <laughs> yeah. BMW, white dude, BMW. I got sucked in. I got sucked in. You know, I bought a I stupid have... Tesla. You did? Yeah. I freaking got, I <laughs> got, got sucked Wait, in. I nice. bought a Tesla. On, I was like, whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I, need I, to I, have, I need to have good. Gucci's, yes, I you know, hate it. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, red bottoms. It's it's or all or the other realtors are going to look at me like I'm a bum. Joneses, right? Mm-hmm. If you don't look the part, then you don't. You're not making any money. It's true, you yeah. know. But but some of the most successful people. I just helped a guy buy a place, and the guy had s- like oodles and oodles of money. Like he's like, which account do you want? Like could have <laughs> bought cash. And if you saw him, you look like uh, he looked like an average Joe. No pun intended, right? Yeah. Just, Probably wearing the same polo shirt he's worn for the last 15 years, wow. just not caring. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a balance in there, right? Like maybe you do have to live life, but I think if, if buying the house is the priority or, or starting a business is a priority or investing in whatever is the priority, then you have to f- change the focus. Oh, man. Yeah, people talk about balance, and it's like sometimes you got to tip the scales, right? Like you can't always be balanced, right? Like sometimes. No, there's no balance in there. Like, in, in sales, the, there's no balance. I, I mean, it, you try. You could try, but yeah. it's just never going to work out. And what I just to kind of backtrack a bit uh, in regards to balance, like there was a point where it's awesome, man. It's, it's, it's a blessing that you had a partner that took on that load that for you for a while, while you were fucking, you know, again, dude, sh- shit hit the fan and there was no money. There was no work. And that's awesome that she was able to. But what I feel is people have a hard time kind of relating, right? Especially when you've reached a certain amount of success, like dude, your videos, I'm sure a lot of lenders or, you know, people in the business look at it and they're like, dude, this guy's fucking awesome. He's made it. He's successful. He's this, he's that. Tell him a little bit about like, like, Hey fucker, I struggle too. And this is why I'm where I'm at. Yeah, no, for sure, man. And I I appreciate that. Um, Yeah. It it hasn't been pretty for a long, long, long time. Right. Like I tell people it was, it was really ugly. I did, I did business wrong for a long time. Um, Like I said, three banks that got shut down by the FDIC, Took from Peter to pay Paul. Lots of debt, um, but you know, and, and lots of sacrifice. My wife did. She stuck by me a lot along the way. I, I sacrificed a with lot a of time. With a newborn, dude. I, I, newborn I got a newborn right now, and holy sh- yeah. yeah. Like, you complained about uh, coming home from a round of golf and being like, I got to deal with this kid. Mm-hmm. Like, my wife literally worked, like, 12, 14 hours at a restaurant, running around, serving on angry people, and then would come home, and then the kid would just be like, Mama! <laughs> screaming at her. Oh, no. I'd be like, sorry, she doesn't want me, and she she deals, you know. So I, I, that that yeah, definitely man. helps. But wow. dude, I mean, no, lots. Kudos lots to Mrs. Soda, by the way. Yeah. Shout out. Yeah, for yeah sure. no, Shout she out. she's a saint. She's a, she's a saint. <laughs> um, but lots of years of eating shit, like just straight up eating shit. Like people look and they're like, oh my gosh, you're doing this deals and you've on this list and you've closed all these loans, and I'm like, it's a lot of 
work with no return, yeah. like zero return. Um, and a lot of doing it wrong. Like I got coaches last seven years. I've been part of the core coaching that's helped. And I found mentors. Like I've really, I think I grew up, so I, like I grew up, I was born in Puerto Rico. I grew up in New York. Um, and I didn't, had, I didn't know anybody with money, like nobody. And I had one defining moment. I was at a mortgage mastermind in Las Vegas and Rick Ruby spoke. How long I, ago was this? What year? This was in shit, 2008. I was uh, my junior year in high school. Yeah, 2008. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. I'm, I'm fucking old. Um, Trust and, me, dude. My, my, and Rick, yeah, yeah and, and I was just like, this guy, th- like, it was the first time I, I heard of somebody in the loan business that made a million bucks. Oh, nice. And I was like, well, that fool can do it. <laughs> if he can do it. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, what does that dude do? That lop. Special? If he, yeah. this lop could do it. <laughs> and uh, and then I just, I just became obsessed with surrounding myself with people. People who are going to bring me up. People who aren't going to bring me down. And that's been a big game changer for me personally. Wow. Is, is surrounding myself with the right people, but then also being that person, right? Like, you have to be that person who's going to bring you up. Like, I'm honored. You, you like, dude, we, you know, we want to talk about, like, the goodness and stuff that the positivity that can come out. And you thought of me, right? Like, that's what I want. That's the imprint I want to leave in the world, right? Because I think it's, it's there's so much that's going to bring you down. You have to constantly bring your A game. You constantly have to be wanting to level up. And you have to surround yourself with those people, because if you surround yourself watching the Kardashians mm-hmm. and angry news all the time, yeah. like, dude, it's just going to, you're going to turn to shit. You know, you hang with fleas, you hang with dogs, you get fleas. Yeah. Right? Like, Your brain gets set so on that true. radio station that you can't oh, get off of it. Dude, yeah. it's so bad. I'm constantly, mm-hmm. like, I was driving over here. I was listening to Jesse Hitzler on a podcast, right? And I'm listening to all his tips and just, you know, oh, yeah. constantly feeding the brain. That's good. And you're because, feeding it good stuff, right? What did uh, Earl Nightingale said? Like, it, your brain is, it's like a, like a, like a soil whether you want to plant nightshade or plant like watermelons, right? I'm paraphrasing. I'm sure yeah. I ruined it, but yeah, essentially that's what he's saying is like, it's one or the other, regardless, your brain is going to bear fruit. It's gonna so plant something. that's the third time I said that phrase. I think I, yeah. that was like the word of the day that I wanted to use. <laughs> there you go. Um, now, uh, before we get to the next segment, mm-hmm. there was one thing that I feel like everybody's been waiting for us to talk about, which is the rates. I mean, the rates, they're above seven right now. Yep. Um, and, like, I know they're not going to go back to the twos. Nope. But, like, I mean, are we going to at least see some fours and fives soon? I mean, like, I, I know you, we don't have a crystal ball, but come on, <laughs> give me some hope, dude. Want me to tell you what I want? Yeah. I want, like, eight. Oh, yeah? You want eight. You want Fuck eight? Yeah. yeah. I want 8% rates. Yeah. I want a lot of people to get the hell out of the industry. Okay. It's going to be survival of the fittest. Survival of the right? fittest. You're either, you're, it's, mm-hmm. it's going to be go time. Right? Like, I, I literally told somebody yesterday, I'm like, if they go to eight by the end of the year, most of these fools are going to get out of the business because Christmas will come and they can't buy gifts. That's true. Oh, yeah. As sad as that is, it's true. It's so yes. true, right? Yeah. And, and I'm like, my mindset is I'm all fucking in. Mm-hmm. I'm on I'm, I'm massive activity, massive action. Like, it's the, your attitude and your action. Only two things you can control. So, for me, it's like the rates are high, but you don't pay in rate. Like, this is like an old school thing that I learned when I first got in the business, right? When you write your check for your mortgage, do you sit there and write, Bank of America. Nope, nobody writes checks anymore, 2% Joe. Two percent rate. Fuck. Two percent. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fucking dinosaur. God. So when you sell the bank, yeah, you Joaquin, don't bank. laugh, Joaquin. It's not that funny, bro. When you pay the damn bank, you're not paying in your two percent rate, right? Like you're not walking around being like two percent rate guy. Like, dude, you're paying dollars and cents. Oh yes, yeah. they are, bro. They're I like know, they're like right? Tesla drivers. You seen that one where like they're like the, suck, the suck, queen, the no, queen. No, they're sucking their own dick while while it's like uh, oh, it's driving itself. They're like, why do else? Why else would a Tesla driver buy a Tesla? Because it drives itself, so they can suck their own dick. Like, oh, oh, I never saw that. That's a good one. I that one. I That's what the two that percent people are doing right now. They're yeah, just probably. like, oh, I got two percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, dude, there, there is definitely a lot of that. But I think again, because you talked about the low inventory, right? The difference in 08 was there was a shit ton of inventory. Yes. There was a lot. Like, there, there's so much inventory. The prices kept coming down. Right now, there's no inventory. So even at seven percent. I mean, I talked to a, an agent the other day. She had 46 offers on her house. Oh, my Dude, God. 46 offers? Six offers. We just won an offer with my client who his bank statement is is like at 8%, which was really good, by the yeah. way. You know, we got a guy. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, and we got we won the offer, and it started off at 950 in North Tustin. It went up to $1.2 million. We had to get to $1.2 to get the house. Dude. Wow. Yeah. At Seven percent interest rates, Real, right? Man. Yeah. Like, so think yep. about if that was five percent interest rates, mm-hmm. you'd have to go to one three because there would have been ten, twenty more buyers. Now, now the problem is, is 
for most first time home buyers, like that's impossible. Like they can't like on a six hundred thousand dollar condo, your payments, you know, especially for first time home buyers, they barely scraped up thirty, forty grand yeah. to buy this, you know, condo in in you know Santa Ana or something or Garden yeah. Grove. And your payment's still upwards of like forty six hundred dollars with taxes, insurance, and everything yeah. included. Like, yeah, if you're putting only ten percent down. Or something, so, yeah. uh, I mean, essentially, number one, agents and lenders have to somehow find investors and align themselves with people with money. But like, what about the little guy? Like, what's in it for them? Like, how do they keep the hope alive? Yeah, it's it's super hard. I worry about my kids because since we're going to focus on how old I am. My daughter should be buying a house here pretty soon. Yeah, right? yeah, right. Nice. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I worry, right? Like that's a five thousand dollar payment, right? And so my thing is, like, we bought our first house. It was a tiny little condo. It was literally behind a cemetery. I don't know why my wife made me buy a condo behind a cemetery, but the neighbors were quiet. And uh, hey, and, and she, she like, we just bought whatever the hell we could afford. I wasn't concerned with keeping up with the Joneses being like, I need a single family and I need a yard and I need to this like at the time. And this was 2004, mm-hmm. three, like three. I just needed a house. Like I just didn't want to rent. And I think that has to be the mindset is like, let me get something, get whatever something. it is that I can afford, because the old school way of doing it is you bought something, you held it for three to four years, you sold it, you moved up, you sold it and moved up. Right. Like, I think people have gotten in this mindset of they've got to buy their forever home. Mm-hmm. I need this three. I need three bedrooms, three bath, and a and an office and a bonus room. And it's like, no, no, bro, you don't. Mm-hmm. You need something, right? Like get something and then leverage that property, take that money, and now you've got your twenty percent down to buy the next place. Yeah, and that yep. payment is cheaper down the road. But if you just keep renting, you're just doing the same stuff over and over and over. So and somebody else's mortgage. Yeah, yeah. you're going to pay somebody's mortgage, right? Yeah. It's either yours or the landlord's, right? But you're going to pay somebody's. So my advice is just buy something. It's probably, it's not your forever home. It's not going to be perfect. Maybe it's one bedroom or maybe it's two bedroom when you really need three, mm-hmm. right? Like it is what it is. You have a little baby, little baby's not taking up a lot of space. So you're you're going to make sacrifices. It, it is what it is, but you got to get in the game. You got to do something. Yeah. Because it's not, it's not slowing down, man. Unless no. something crazy, unless we go to war with China, Dude, everybody and their mother wants something <laughs> happens wild, right? Like, yeah, everybody I, wants I to live in California. Like they're not making any more land. Everybody wants to live in California. Mm-hmm. So, like Joe, what do you tell your fellow lenders with the way that the market's going right now? Like, I'm sure most of them are surviving off of like you know soup kitchens and broker preview breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> like I personally know of a lender who's great. Like he's awesome. He's been in the business for 20 plus year. He works his ass off, and the guy's closed like three loans in the last quarter. Like, what's been working for you? And just you know, what do you tell them to give them some hope too? Man, um, so it, it is definitely survival of the fittest, right? Um, so my, my, my whole thing this last year, year and a half has been my attitude and my actions, right? Like I really work on the mental game cause I feel like we lose right up front in between the ears. Oh, like a yeah. hundred, you wake up. I mean, the other day I opened up my computer, freaking MBS highways down 70 bips, right? Old Joe Soto would just close the computer and, and mess around. Have a day. drink. Right. Like, yeah, yeah like legit back mm-hmm. in the day, it'd be like, all right, let's just go start drinking. Cause this day's over. Um, so now I think it's, it's a little bit of what we had back in the day. It takes 10 times the activity to close one time the deal. Oh yeah. It really, really does. So, um, my attitude is, is if you don't have any deals, you should be prospecting all day long. And by prospecting, I mean, calling people, reaching out to your database, making phone calls, right? Not just scrolling the internet and, and you know, Instagram or whatever, um, and if you're going to do that, like be intentional about whatever the hell you do, right? So have a list. You're going to call these people. You're going to talk about this. Like I am super intentional about like, this is my, I call it my go-to conversation. So I might call a hundred people and I have the same damn conversation with every single person, right? Like I'm going to talk to you about this eight minute Jesse Hitzler speech that I saw because it was super impactful and I will have that same thing, or I'm going to talk about new product, or I'm going to talk about um, a change in the market or the fed meeting, right? Like there was a fed meeting. If you're a lender and there was a fed meeting yesterday, you can call a hundred realtors tomorrow and tell them about the fed meeting. Yep. So you're calling realtors. You're not just calling your average Joe that you are hoping wants to buy a house or refinance. Cause that's no. kind of dead anyway. Yeah. I'm calling a lot of, a lot of agents. Um, I do call my past clients a lot. 
I do call anybody like orphan leads, people who came to me once and, you know, we didn't get them on the phone. So I'm trying to like, I'm digging I, I like to, to get out. those people, right? Orphan like, leads. That's orphans, a, right? Yeah, they that's, got, that's a good one. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm, I mean, every, and every day of the week I'm strategic, right? Like yeah. Monday I'm calling, I'm calling realtors. Tuesday I'm calling my database. Uh, no, sorry. Tuesdays I call my pipeline. Anybody in my pipeline. Wednesday uh, I'm calling letter of the week. Thursday, I'm calling past clients, right? Fridays, I'm calling VIPs. Like every day of the week, I have a different intent. But right now, you got to do like 10 times the activity. Um, Damn, dude. I do a lot of events, so I'm constantly trying to leverage my time, right? Like if I can see one person, let me try to see three, four, five, ten. Yeah. So I'm constantly trying to, you know, I'm trying, always doing that for sure. Mm -hmm. But it does, it takes a lot more activity. It takes a lot more follow-up. You have to be more valuable. If you're a lender out there, like you have to be valuable, to your database, you have to be valuable to your sphere, you have to be valuable to your realtor partners, financial planners, like anybody who's in your life, right? Like you have to have value because you're you're right now we're all farmers. We're all planting a shit ton of seeds. Mm -hmm. That's it. And every once in a while one's gonna grow. And you're like, thank you, baby Jesus. Mm -hmm. That turned into a deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? But the the truth is that might not sprout for six, eight, ten months. No. Right. I think one thing I I've been really good at is I've planted seeds super consistent. Right. Like I am it's not pretty with me. I'm just <laughs> uber consistent. You come to my office, you look at my calendar, right? Like I'm consistent every single day. Joey Appleseed. I am consistent, man. That's, Dude, I that's am. how you do it. And and you just have to be consistent. And and part of that consistency is being in the right mindset. Okay. It is. It's podcast. It's audibles. It's um. It's reading. It's surrounding yourself with the right people. Having masterminds, right? Like I'm constant. I dude. I am the biggest head case man. Like I am the most. It's funny, and I tell people this, and they think I'm full of crap, but I am the one of the most insecure people you'll meet. Sure. Like like straight up. Like I, sometimes I sit there and I look at the phone and I'm like. I'm calling all these people and they all hate me. Oh shit. I know what that feels <laughs> like. Yeah. Right. And yeah. you're just looking at the phone and you're like, they're all going to tell me to F off. Yep. Nobody really wants to hear. And like, I'm just bothering everybody. And every person we've all felt that way. Everybody goes through that. Everybody. And I go through it every single day, bro. Yeah. Like oh, people yeah. look at me and they're like, it. yeah, they're like, no way. And, and, but I realized like in order for me to hit my goals, I just got to, I just got to do it, right? Like, yeah, it, it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. It is. And, like, and it, oh my God, like I know so many people that they just get that, that, that call reluctance and they think it's like just them. No, and it's like, I get it. There's, there's, there's certain skills that maybe they, they need to brush up on. They yeah. need to watch somebody else doing it. Like, like in your case, like I would say, Hey Joe, like, would you mind if I just sat in and watched you take phone calls for a while? Yeah. Right. And, and that's if you would allow us. Right. But which I'm sure. Dude, Joe's really cool. He's very accessible. You know, hit him up. Totally. Um, but they just automatically think it's not for me. You know, they hate me. I'm, you know, uh, there's the rates are so high. What am I even going to talk about? Yeah. So you just gave them like seven things to, to talk about. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. No. And, and it's true. Dude, and I struggle with it. Like, yeah. that's why I have to work on it every single day. And it doesn't seem like you struggle with it. It doesn't seem like you have any call reluctance. It doesn't seem like you have that voice in your head telling you not to do it. Yeah. But because of the way it comes out. But you do. Every that's single day. Extremely relatable. Yeah. And the things that you're involved with are huge and they attract agents' attention. Like the event with Renee. Yeah. That was, that was incredible when Super I met cool. you there. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Zolma and Eric were like, oh, you got to go this. You got to meet Joe Soto. Have you met Joe yet? Oh, he's a great guy. Like, you got to yeah. go to this event. See, agents are talking about you. You're not even part of that conversation. Yeah. You're not no, part of that cool. conversation. And so they recognize right away, okay, Joe's got another event. Yeah. We got to be there. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I think I, it comes from gratitude, man. I think you have to be authentic. You have to be yourself, right? Uh, people will read between the lines if you're not. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just, I am who I am. I'm getting better at being comfortable in my own skin. But there's a lot of me that's not like me even wearing this hat and this outfit today is me not, not my norm. But I'm like, ah, this is me, man. Yo, this is Saturday. Saturday. Not a boring real estate podcast. It's yeah. a Saturday it's afternoon. Cool. Saturday, I gotta dude. show up. Like, Ted. I was just like, whatever, dude. Yeah. Ted would have never worn this hat. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised, man. He plays, oh, he plays yeah. baseball. No, Ted's Ted's gangster. No, the first thing that Joe told me is like, you got Ted. He's like, that's badass. Yeah. I'm like hell yeah. Oh, like yeah, Ted. dude, Ted's Ted's cool. And uh, Ted's a good dude. Mm -hmm. Now. So, obviously, people are making money on the lending side. Yeah. People are also making money on the real estate side. Mm -hmm. Ryan, 
you've been killing it, dude. Like you've got a ton of listings recently. Yes. Like I've even helped you close a couple of those. Yes. Like, is there some secret sauce? Is there something you're not fucking telling me? Like yeah. what's going on? We're dude, telling like, them nobody's selling their house right now. You should put your home on the market while nobody else has their home listed. If three other people on your block pop up, your home value is not going to go as high. This is the time to sell. Buyers are lining up at the door because there's nothing for sale right now. Yep. So that's a big one. We had a lot of sellers that are like, not right now, not right now, not right now. So instead of going, okay, I'll call you in six months, we said, okay, just as long as you list by July, you're going to be safe. And then here we go. Like all these listings, even if they're a little late, we got some stuff going on late August. And they're like, sorry, we tried to make July. And it was like, wow, they really bit on that. Yeah. And I said, okay, well, as long as you list it by July, you're going to get in there while the, while the going's hot. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys writing notes here? Like, that we're not mm-hmm. doing this for our health. Yeah. Like, we're, mm-hmm. we're we're literally doing this because we were like, we, we feel bad for you guys. Like, thankfully, life has been good for us. You know, we didn't go out and start doing Uber. And if you did, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. But, like, if you were to be listening to podcasts, like Joe's telling you guys, mm-hmm. and getting some good information in there, you're not just going to be stuck in your own thoughts because, of course, you're just sitting there in, in that negativity, and you end up quitting the business, which... We kind of hope you do. Yeah. But we also, again, <laughs> we're doing this so you don't, so you yeah. can actually get some good information yeah. from people that are kicking ass right now. So, yeah, dude, Ryan, Joe, you guys are freaking crushing it. Yeah. We're I mean, do- it's it's a contact sport, right? You just, you have to have those conversations with people. Yes. And, and plant the right seed. Mm-hmm. And maybe it doesn't grow until July or August. But if you don't ever plant the, if you don't have the conversation, dude, it's zero. No. And zero. follow up. It's a zero, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's the big thing. And. And I'm telling you, you the market chews you up. You don't close a deal for two months, and all of a sudden you start to rethink your life. And I know, dude, I I was there like in 2007 and eight. Like that was me every single day. Wow, every day, dude, every day. Right? Yeah, that's awesome. So now I'm super intentional about like I can't go back to, and maybe it's some of that fear, right? Like mm-hmm. I can't go back to that day. I can't go back to that level of broke. Um, and maybe that's part of what keeps me going. You know, mm-hmm. that was a serious level of broke, bro. A serious level. Of so broke. that's my, I, my new thing. That level of broke. Yeah, we've we've all been, been there. there. We right? haven't just been broke. What we've made money and then kind of gone broke. I mean, we yeah. both have been there. We felt the hard times of the industry. Yeah. yeah. Luckily, we're doing good. This guy's crushing it right now. Yeah. It's like every open house, he picks up a buyer. Yeah, that's like, it. Yeah. You just got to put yourself in. You got to mm-hmm. create create your own luck, man. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I just had the baby, and you know, there's that pressure that you feel. You know, especially first time parent. And I'm like, oh my God, like, yeah, I just crushed it. I, I you know, I, I closed like five, six deals in like a matter of like a month and a half. And I was like, oh my God. And then I'm out of escrows because I've been just tending to this child. Yeah. And I kind of took my eye off the ball for a second. And I'm like, now I feel unemployed again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Every time yeah. you end up, you have no escrows and you have no prospects. I feel like I should be standing on the side of the freeway, holding up a sign that says, we'll sell your house for food. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's how I feel. And so I'm like, do I get a job? Like, mm-hmm. what do I do? And I'm like, I, I actually, I like, I, I even like went as far as like, I set up an appointment because my buddy was talking about this job that he's a sales job. He's killing it. He's making great money. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I need to do that. And then actually Ryan, dude, Ryan, he's like, Hey, why don't you come to this open house? Um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll share it. Like we, we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll share the buyer and let's, let's see what we can do. Yeah. And I shit you not, there was over 100 families at that open through. house. Yeah, we had over 200 people through that open house. Damn. Unreal. And, I, and yeah. I was like, and so then I get to that appointment the next morning, the, the interview, and I'm like, I went because I just, I didn't want to make my friend look bad. So I went and I was like, you know, I interviewed and I would actually love to work at that place because I love, like, it's like a call center, cold calling, just like that one call close. Yeah. I love that environment. Like, it's, it's where I came from. That's where I got my chops from. It's like, I, I actually, I was like, man, I want to come around and slap your freaking, mm-hmm. all your salesmen around. These guys, it was a you're, boiler t- room. You're, yeah. Yeah, you're telling me three yeah. sales a day. Like I'll mm-hmm. double those numbers. <laughs> but then I was like, but wait, I, I literally, I was this close to saying yes, mm-hmm. but I'm sorry. I'm going to have to politely decline. I just freaking did an open house and I have so much business. I don't even have time to be sitting here with you. Cause I got people to call and I got, yeah. you know, stuff to do. And then it's just been a snowball. I did another open house, uh, this following Sunday, there was only six people that went through it. I, I felt it was overpriced. Um, and I, you know, I almost had that negativity again, but I was like, you know what? I'm doing this for, for someone that like, I really want to impress. 
I'm going to make the best of it. Mm -hmm. totally. And the, like, literally, I was, like, maybe five minutes before the open house was to end. Yeah. And I was, like, I already went outside to go get the, the signs. I walk You're inside. Wrapping it up. I was wrapping it up. Mm -hmm. I walk inside, and there is a couple that is, like, writing their information down. I don't even have to tell them to, right? Usually you're like, they're like, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah can you please them. sign in? And mm -hmm. they're like, you know, put a fake number, right? <laughs> yeah. They were doing it on their own. And in everybody that I had talked to that day, everybody had an agent or they were just cash buyers. And, you know, like they weren't looking to talk to me. This couple too, they're like, no, we got an agent. We're cool. Thank you. Because they've been through the ringer. The first thing I asked, I was like, well, how long have you guys been looking? And they're like, oh my God, like a long time. I was like, yeah, it's been crazy. It's been, it's been really insane. And I'm sure you guys have been getting beat out by like a bunch of cash offers and stuff. And they're like, yep, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'm like, Brutal. it's like a battery. It's like a battery that they have. And every time they don't get their offer accepted or they, they don't even get the opportunity to get an offer in because it just goes up so quick. Yeah. That battery, just the, 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 the charge level just keeps going down and down and down and yeah. down. And so what, um, uh, what I told him, I was like, well, look, dude, like uh, number one, buy now, don't give up because the rates will come down eventually and you don't want to be going up against 30 offers to one house. Yeah. Right. And if you buy now, you'll be able to refinance when they do come down. We don't know when, but they will eventually. eventually it it yeah. always happens. Yes. Um, and so we had a really good conversation and they hit me up the next morning. They're like, Hey Diego, we want to work with you. Nice. There you go. See, See all it takes is one. All it takes is one. All dude. it takes is one, man. And that's now it. I'm like, that, I'm that's like, the beauty of this yeah. business. And right? now I'm like four escrows deep because the, the, the I think the positivity, <laughs> the snowball effect from his open house. Yes. I end up uh, linking up with another friend. That guy, uh, we just submitted an offer on like a 1.2. He wants to buy another place while we're in escrow. So now, like I'm telling you, I got like four escrows, and and it's it was just. The mindset. Way yeah. to go, buddy. That's yeah. awesome. That's how you do it, man. Dude, I'm not yeah. trying to gloat. I'm just trying to yeah. tell you guys. No, it's that, great. Like, literally, well, but I was it's, looking for another job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it, it it really comes down to creating your own luck. Mm -hmm. Right? Like it people, really people will look at that and go, wow, Diego's so lucky. But that's bullshit. Because Diego went and sat at the open house and dealt with the 200 people and followed up and had conversations and was intentional about showing his value. Mm -hmm. That luck... That it happened, right? You don't. Th there's no say. You create your own luck. Yeah, you Whether do. Say right? luck is like, when preparation meets opportunity. Some, something, something like that. Something like that, right? that, dude. But I, I just, I don't believe like anybody's lucky. No, no, no. Right? Like maybe the guy who hits the Powerball, right? Yes. That, that guy, okay, fine. <laughs> uh, or the guy who stole the Powerball ticket. Mm -hmm. Maybe that guy. Yeah. But, but the truth is, if you didn't put yourself in the right situation, none of it happens. None mm -hmm. of it. No. None of it. If you just said, "I'm just going to sit at home and I'm going to watch an angel game," and they'll probably get smoked by whoever. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Well, oh, hey. did I say that out loud? Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> They'll probably give up a grand slam. But, probably. But, but Otani pitch. Every time. Oh, man, uh, man. That happened yesterday, right? Two days oh, ago. Oh, yeah, they did. They gave up a grand slam. Yeah, they did. But yeah, it's true. You create your own luck, man. And, yeah. And I'm a big believer in that, right? You, again, you do the activity. You do the work. Good things happen. You do nothing, nothing happens. That, yeah, exactly. As they say, it's not about what happens to you. It's what you do with what happens to you. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're talking about how fierce it is with the competition and everything going on right now. And with buyers so competitive, I was thinking, you know, a little side quest here. Like, would it be cool, like a reality show, where you put like an octagon on a front lawn of the house and you let the <laughs> buyers battle it out? To win the house. Could you just imagine that? Dude, that would be like, awesome. You got like this middle-aged lady like and her husband like ready yeah. to like fight this other couple who are like first-time home buyers. We have Mildred and, yeah. and, her, and her husband. And you know, <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're, they're downsizing Dude, into this house. And then you got the first-time so buyers good. with the 300K gift from their, their, yeah. from their aunt. And if you've got cash, then <laughs> yeah. the other person has to fight with one arm. Yes, yes. There you <laughs> yeah. go. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, Dude. If you have cash, you only get oh, one I arm. I love yeah. it, yeah. There you go. You yeah. Just How do you cash buy? Buyers beating us out, <laughs> dude. Right? <laughs> dude. Or if you're a cash buyer, yes. work with me. Let me be your agent. Yeah, that would yeah, be man. so no. hilarious. Yes. Yes. Find yeah. all these cash. Buyers. I was thinking like the Rock'em Sock'em robots. That would be perfect. Dude, just put them yes. in the front lawn. Just put them on the like front lawn. Yes. Yeah, whoever wins. Yeah, it it seems like it's a battle like that. It too, really man. is, dude. I feel bad for some people where they just get beat out, and it's it's hard. Mm -hmm. it's I mean, it's an it emotional. It's an emotional oh, process. It is, and that's what buying a house is. A like ninety five percent of the time, like what I. I've told what I've been told by like a commercial agent in the commercial it's all numbers mm -hmm. totally. like with residential it's it's all emotional yeah. like everything about it is is emotion I like this I don't like this mm -hmm. this one I feel like this is my house and yeah I'm already putting up the you know the pictures in my mind um but so what do you do to 
like in your case, like how do you sweeten up someone's offer to try to help them get this freaking offer accepted? Like yeah. say it's a first time home buyer. Like yeah. what would you do? So, so we're super, super aggressive. Um, I'd say 90% of the offers that we're writing have no loan, no appraisal contingency. Oh, um, we're doing anywhere. No from low 10. contingency. Yeah. Too. No, nowhere. From what, like are the, what, are the, what are the setbacks Whoa. to it? How do you guys overcome that? Um, we have fully underwrite everybody up front. So, I mean, if they're self-employed, multiple companies, like we're not going to be that aggressive, but mostly everybody else, we underwrite them up front, right? Like we, we don't like surprises. That's our motto. Right? No surprises when, when we get into escrow. Surprises in escrow are bad. So we're super, super aggressive, right? We'll put in anywhere up to 250 to $500 a day per diem. Wow. So we're doing these 15 day offers with $500 per diems. That's awesome. you guys taking and, fucking notes. And hey, I'll accept it. <laughs> yeah. yeah he's accepted. Listing agent. I and, and I get yeah. listing agents who are like, uh, they, they call me out right? they're like, yeah, come on, bro. Like, are you really? I'm like, no, we'll, we'll put a per diem. I'll pay the per diem. Whoa. And then, and then I do like, I will Damn, throw, and I, you offer to pay the per diem. That's I will throw insane. my weight around a little bit. And I'm like, look at my Yelp and look at my Zillow. Like, oh, I, I've got 400 five star reviews. You're yeah. like gangster, that, bro. That didn't just happen by luck. Yeah. And they're like, all my clients need to go oh. on Yelp and Zillow right now. For I, real. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I hope all every five of you. lender's listening to you right now because yeah. there are those lenders that do not do that. Do that. They no, wait. no, no. I'm super, super, yeah. super aggressive. Yeah. I mean, I call, I, st- I text. He I send them. video texts to the listing you know, agent. Wow. Like when, you, know. you know, because they're getting blown up. I'm waiting right? outside your window. Yeah, you know. You're, you you yeah. have a listing. You're, oh, sure. You're getting blown up, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. the last thing you want to do is, like, you start to just, damn, you're, you're drained. <laughs> So how many times has a lender sent you a video text? Never. Zero, right? Zero. Unless it's Joe. If I ever made yeah. an offer on your stuff, <laughs> yes, dude. you'd get a video text. I just sent one to, to Jen Tackney. All right. She was like, well done. See? Yeah. She, and she does a boat, a boatload of oh, listings, yes, she does. right? She said, she's well like, done. She's, she's like, like well done. You. you got my attention. <laughs> you got my attention, dude. You Love got that. my attention. Right on. Like, hey, if I can't get you on the phone, I'm going to get in front of you. Yeah. yeah. Right? Ooh, like, I love that. I, I just... Because again, it's good thing you're nice to look at. You yeah, have to dude. be not hardly. You yeah, have to be man. relentless. <laughs> yeah. Like right now, and 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 the truth is, like from a lender standpoint, your client has to believe, one thousand percent, that they have a better chance of getting a house with you than anybody else. Yeah. Even as an agent, they have to believe because otherwise they're going to walk into the open house and be like, "Okay, Susie, I'll work with you instead." They need to believe. Yes. Within their soul. Mm-hmm. that their best chance of getting a house is with Diego or with Joe or with Ryan. Okay. And if they don't, you're done. Okay. You're done. Because if they talk to me, they're going to be like, hell yeah, I'm on the Joe caboose. Let's go. <laughs> Joe's got me. We're going to write a winning offer, right? Yeah. And it doesn't work. Like right now, it's harder. You're going to write mm-hmm. more offers, but it doesn't matter, right? Like you, they you, they have to know you're in the trenches with them. Uh, okay. You do. Sweet. So, you, you know, and if you're not, dude, you're you're going to struggle, man. You're gonna struggle. So we're super, super aggressive. Like <laughs> sometimes people look at me and they're Damn, like, Damn, dude, really if I, if I would not offer to pay their per diem. No. We like, offer to pay the per I, uh, no. I very no. rarely have to pay it though, man. I'll yeah. be honest. No. We're gonna very cut this out. Rarely. I don't want any of my clients nope. to see this. No, no. <laughs> very rarely we'll pay just, just let them fight in the octagon on the front lawn. Yeah. That's gonna do it. Well, you can just do an arm wrestle. Like yes. that'd be cool. Like will, over the top. Like, I, oh, I, I will host it with a macho man Randy Savage voice. <laughs> oh yeah. Put that ten percent. Damn. Yeah. Damn. You got two minutes of playtime. Yeah. yeah, all right. Dude, that'd be so good. Yeah, but it, it seems like it, right? But it, that's how it is every day. Oh, it's, yeah. It's a battle every single damn day right now. All right, so guys, we're doing a new segment that we like to call Tell the People. Uh, every guest that comes on our show, we're going to ask them, you know, just something that they would like to tell the world, whether they want to tell the world off, or they want to give you some hope, or they want to just promote whatever it is that they're doing if they're writing a book or you know, I don't know, they're doing a marathon. Uh, Joe, so we would like to open up the platform. What do you want to tell the world? Man, there's, there's so much, so many, so many angles that you can go at. Tell yeah. the people. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, basically what's, what's on, what's been on my mind most recently um, is that your, your words matter, right? What you speak, what you say, what comes out of your mouth really, really matters. How you talk to people, how you present yourself. Um, you know, I, I just saw seen Jesse Itzler speak and, and one of the things he really spoke about was the impact you make on others, right? You need to wake up every day and bring your A game because tomorrow's not guaranteed, right? Like you, tomorrow you're gone. This might be the last episode and last recording we ever get of Joe and Diego and Ryan, right? So you have to live each day like you don't have tomorrow, right? And in whatever you do, whether it's taking out the trash at home or 
doing you know stuff with the baby or going on a listing presentation or whatever it is, bring your A damn game because tomorrow's not guaranteed, right? So tomorrow's not guaranteed. And then the way you speak, like there's so much self-talk that goes into this world, right? That what you say really does matter, man. And just be really aware of that because I'm telling you, it's so easy to get into these ruts and get into this negative space and it will just ruin you again in any aspect. I, my, my youngest daughter do, does it sometimes with soccer and whatever. And, and you'll just see like she just gets into a bad headspace. So, you know, my two things are, you know, the words you speak matter and just be really aware of that, you know. And then the other part is just life's going to keep running, man. You don't know about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like be impactful. Bring your A fucking game every day. That's it. Like, and if you bring your A game every day and whatever you do from writing thank you cards to being on a podcast to whatever it is, sweeping the damn floor, bring your damn A game. And when you're gone and they put you in a basket and it's in a coffin in the ground, people are going to be like, dude, Diego, man, he brought his A game every time. <laughs> right. And that's what it's about. It's not about watches, money, all that shit. It's about how you make people feel and the impact you make in life. Fucking A. I love that. Mic drop. Yeah, man. That sure, was man. awesome. It's yeah. true. Words matter. Words matter, yeah. man. And, and how you make people feel, right? What you do for others, how you treat people, that you're respectful, right? Like, that's the shit that matters. The other stuff, the stuff you own and, and things, things are just things, man. But, but the impact you make on the world, and it's something I'm really super hyper-focused on right now, is just leaving the world a better place. Meeting people and being like, dude, that Joe, he's cool. Mm -hmm. Like, I really like that Joe. Because, you know, I mean, they're going to put me in a hole. <laughs> and it's yeah. just going to be it's like that poem have you ever seen the poem the dash i'd like to hear it so it's a really good poem and it, it's the premise of the poem is is it like a limerick like a limerick oh uh, no that's a fancy word i don't know what that means um <laughs> Me neither, dude. isn't that like a stanza uh, like a like an irish limerick language of origin please like some shakespeare yeah shit. no it's like a it's yeah. anyway dude that was a lot yeah i don't know <laughs> Uh, Joaquin, can you look up limerick? Yeah, please? limerick. Uh, but, but the premise is this, man, and it's, it's actually pretty deep, but it, it's, it's when you die, you have a headstone. It's the day you're born and the day you die, right? But what's really most important is the little dash in the middle. Oh. Because that little dash in the middle is going to define who and what you were. Wow. Right? Oh that's so, huge, dude. It's yeah. super deep. Look it up. It's yeah. called the Dash Poem. It's the really good. Poem. I don't want to go really, really super deep. We could talk about how bad the Yankees are this year. They're in last place. Mm -hmm. They are horrible, horrible. I'm a big time Yankee fan. Um, you know, I mean, there, there's lots of stuff. But yeah, if you want to know what we want to let the world know, <laughs> yeah. the a lot of that stuff. There's man. a lot of that, a lot stuff, of that stuff. Yeah, there you go. There's Words some dash matter, stuff. and the Yankees are blowing it. Yeah. The Yankees are horrible. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. You're fucking welcome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and uh well with that i just want to leave off with mm -hmm. again thank you so much for for coming dude i think this has been just yep. uh, every episode that we seem to like that we do seems to just blow the other one out of the water mm -hmm. yeah um this this is no different thanks man um, this yeah. is cool this is a lot of fun man i yeah. pre i appreciate the opportunity and, and always love love to talk i think we're all fighting the fight together right right like that's that why too. i love that we're we're here collaborating because we're all in the trenches mm -hmm. right and there's no ego right it's it's all like let's help let's all do this it, the market's tough we're all going to bring each other up the mountain right yes, it's not are. a matter of like oh dude let me we're not crabs trying to you know pull <laughs> well, each some other people down. think yeah. they are some people are crabs mm -hmm. right but i don't surround myself with the crabs oh, right yeah. but I, I appreciate what you guys are doing because this is cool man you're, you're trying to help others man and that's that's what it's about that's what it's about this this is exactly what we're doing we we take out of our free time on a saturday morning we could be doing anything else yeah. we care about this industry and the people in it we have we compete with them but we care 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. that speaks volumes about who you guys are yeah thank you, man. Cool. oh this yeah great man thanks for being on our show dude this was awesome cool right yeah on. Thanks for watching, everybody. We love you. Love you. Like, send, comment, Follow, share. Follow, subscribe, all of that fun stuff. All of that. And go yes. check out oh, The Journey out with the, Joe. The Joe Soto or The Journey with Joe or all of that fun stuff. I'm all over. Oh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs>